In this lecture, I'll be going through the basics of how to create and edit railings. I'll then be going into the Villa Stein model and modeling a few railings, one for the roof balustrading and a couple for the stairs. I've opened up a blank separate project to go through the main concept of railings for this lecture. A railing is a sketch-based component composed of a number of different elements. You have the top rail, which is the highest horizontal element of a railing. A handrail, which is an intermediate rail used for hands and can be linked with supports. Start, corner and end posts, which are vertical elements found at the start, end and corner of the railing sketch. Balusters, which are the pattern based vertical elements in between the ends, starts and corners. Rails, which are horizontal elements made up of a profile and can be set to different heights. And supports, which can attach to handrails. Railings can be placed in a model in a number of ways. They can be added as freestanding components or attached to hosts such as floors, ramps, roofs, slab edges, and stairs. To draw a railing, I simply go to the Architecture tab, navigate to the Circulation panel, select Railing. I can either sketch a path or place a stair on a stair or a ramp. I'm going to sketch a path to begin with. I have the similar draw tools that we are used to when drawing other sketch elements. Simply draw a line, draw one line, then say a curve, make sure that is a continuous loop, press finish edit mode and my railing has been created. Go into 3D view and you can see the resulting railing here. So this is the simplest way to create a railing. Here I have some stairs and a raised floor surrounded by walls. If I go to the floor plan, I can draw the railing. I can select the type from my project if I have a number of different types built in. I can simply click around the edge of where I want my railing to go. I can right click to cancel, finish edit mode. If I go back to the 3D, you can see that the railing is still flat on level one. However, I can now associate this railing to a host by selecting on the railing, selecting pick new host, and I'm going to select this stair. And you can see how the railing adapts to suit the gradient of the stair. And because the stair is aligned to the top of the floor, the rest of the sketch extends around the edge of the stair. I can change the offset from the sketch line that I drew by selecting the railing, selecting offset from path, and I could change that to say 25 millimeters. I actually need it to go the other way, so I can say minus 25 millimeters, and now the railing sits offset from the sketch line, like so. Note that you can only have one complete sketch within a railing. So if I edit this path, I can edit the sketch in 3D. If I say delete this sketch line here, select finish edit mode, I get a warning saying the railing must be a single connected sketch. 
If I want separate pieces of railing, create two or more separate railings. So I need to, would have to create another railing. I can cancel edit mode to discard my edits and the railing resets as such. I'll now go through the properties of the railing. Just zoom in a little bit so you can see. The majority of properties of the railing are defined in the in the railing type. So I can select edit type. So here we have the rail structure. So these are the horizontal elements below the top rail. So this is the top rail and these are the rails here. The baluster placement which sets out the vertical baluster elements. I can have a baluster offset if I want the offset in plan. I can have a use a landing height adjustment, which adjusts the height of the railing on a stair when it goes over a landing. I can change how the angle joins connect, how the tangent joins connect, and the rail connections to be welded or trimmed. So for example, if I cancel and I go to a corner, if you look at how the rails are joined here, if I go edit type and I change from weld to trim, select apply, you can see how they are now separate rails elements. I can define the use of a top rail. So this element here, I can say whether I want a top rail. I can then define the height and then the type. I can set a se I can set a handrail if I wanted to. Set the orientation and the type. And then I can also set a second handrail if I choose. So let's start with the horizontal rails. In the rail structure, I click on this edit button here and I enter the rails non-continuous properties. Here I have a number of rails that I've defined. I can give them a name, anything I want. A text, this is a text-based input. I give it a height, an offset in plan, and I can define a profile using a profile family from the drop-down list. So I could change this to be five millimeters as well. I can also then give a material if I wish. I can insert a new railing, new rail by selecting insert. I can delete a rail by selecting and delete. I can duplicate a rail by duplicating the rail after I've selected in the row. And I can move rails up and down this order if I wish. So I've changed this rail number nine, which is this top thick rail here. Unfortunately, if I click apply now, you won't see the changes. I have to select OK to close this dialog box. Then I can click apply and you can see how that rail has now changed. Next, we'll look at the balusters. So these are the vertical elements along the railing. Select the edit button here to open the baluster placement properties. You see it's split into two sections. I have the main pattern here and I have the posts at the bottom. So these are the start, corner and end posts. So the regular, regular baluster is the balusters that are within a length of the sketch line. I can define a family from a drop down list of appropriate baluster families. I can define the, the base. So this I can define, it can be the host. So in this case is the stair. And as you can see, the balusters go down to the host. If not, I can change it to different rails. So for example, if I wanted the main reg regular baluster patterns to start at say the 
rail zero. Again, if I click apply, the changes won't take into effect. If I click OK and then apply, you'll see how the balusters have now gone up to start at rail zero. Change the base back to the host. I can set a base offset, so that is a vertical offset from the base, so I can, that can be a negative or a positive number. I then set the top, so I, where I want the top of the balusters to go. Again, I've chosen the top rail here, but I could choose any other element in this drop down list. Again, I can have a vertical offset, negative or minus. I can then set the distance from the previous, so this is the spacing between the next baluster in the pattern. And I can give it a horizontal offset in plan. I can have multiple balusters. I could select this row, duplicate, pick, say, I'll pick a round baluster for the purpose of the demonstration. So this is the pattern, so it'll start with the square baluster, then the round baluster, and then start again from the square to the round. I can set the distance from previous, so I'll make this 200. It's just so you can see the difference. Click Apply, click OK, and click Apply. So here we have the square baluster here, and then 200 millimeters after that, we have the round baluster, and then 600 millimeters from the previous one, so from the round baluster, we have the square one again. I can change the order by moving them up or down, and I can delete them if I wish. So I delete there. Click OK and OK. I'll now zoom out a little bit. Edit type again. Go back to the baluster placement. So I can break the pattern at each segment end, which is the segment of the sketch line. So because this railing is one sketch line, the segment would be the length here. I can segment it at angles greater than. So if there is an gr angle greater than 45 degrees or 90 degrees or any angle I choose. Or I can choose to never break the pattern. I can also justify the pattern. So if I were to start the pattern at the beginning of the railing, it would start at the beginning and go regularly as directed across the railing. So if I click OK and apply, you can see how it's moved the railings here. However, now it's not very regular in the corner and at the end. I can justify it at the end, at the center, and I can also spread the pattern to fit, which will spread the pattern evenly along the length of the rail segment so that no excess space occurs, but the actual spacing of the balusters may be different from that specified in the main pattern. So if I spread pattern to fit now, click OK, click Apply, you'll see how the spacing gets slightly larger. If I go to OK, go to a floor plan, I will draw a section through the railing, open the section, if I draw a dimension, between the balusters, you'll see that it's spread the pattern to fit inside the length of this segment here, like so. Delete this section. Go back to type properties, baluster placement. I can also use the baluster per tread on a stair. So I can actually define if I want a baluster on every single tread of this stair. So I can choose to have one baluster per tread, and then I pick the baluster family. I'll pick the round 25 millimeters. Click OK, click Apply, and you can see how on every tread 
it's added a round baluster. It's then continued that pattern all the way along. I'll remove that. Click OK and apply. It is a bit annoying how I have to close the baluster and rail adjustments whenever I change those settings. Finally, I can specify the start post, so the start post here, any corner posts, and any end posts. Again, the same settings apply. I can select the family, the base, base offset, the top, the top offset, the space from the end of the, the space inwards from the end of the sketch line, and then the horizontal offset. I can then define to have corner posts at never or at each segment end. So if I select each segment end, click OK, click Apply, you see it's added a corner post in here. If I select OK and zoom in, see that I have a, the corner post is now slightly larger than this one, the regular pattern. Select the railing again, select Edit Type. We'll now take a look at the top rail and handrails. So, the top rail, I can define whether to use it or not use it. If I untick it, these options become unavailable. In the, when I tick it, I can set the height and I can then set the type. To select the type, I then Similar to applying runs and landings in stairs, click on this little button at the end of the property box and it opens up a type properties of the system family top rail type and then I have a number of types I can choose in here. So I've got this 70 by, so 50 by 75 floor extension. I can set the default join, mitre or fillet, the profile, the hand clearance, if the handrail is going to be wall mounted against the wall and the transitions I can choose as to whether it'll be a simple a gooseneck or no transition. Note the images at the bottom of the description. I can then specify the material of the top rail and I can also then specify the extensions which are these bits and the end of the top rail. So here you can see I have a extension to the floor which means it drops down to the floor and at a distance of 200 millimeters from the edge of the sketch line. I have the option of doing of walls and posts so I could change the beginning extension to a post. I can then click apply and you can see here how it becomes a post. I can change the length to say 300. I can click apply and you can see how it extends it here. The same can be done to the top. I can also give a tread depth for when it is at the bottom of a stair and it will extend the angled part of the railing or the top rail down by an extra tread length before creating the post return or the floor extension, like so. I'll untick that for the time being. I can also, if I, if I wish, have a termination from a pick list of the termination families. So I can have a termination family here, which is rectangular wood. Click apply and it will add a termination family to the bottom of the extension here. I'll just exit these and zoom in to so you can see. I can now select the handrail. 
So handrail, I can select the position. So here I can either choose to have none, I can have one on the left, one on the right, or I can have a handrail on the left and the right. I've chosen right here, and again, similar to the top rail, I select the type by clicking this button here to open up the type properties of the system family handrail type, and then a number of types here. Similar properties here, except with the handrail, you actually define the height above the floor, whereas with the top rail, if I cancel this, the height is defined in the railing type. So you can have the same top rail in multiple railing families at different heights, and but you can only have the same handrail type at consistent heights. Again, similar properties, you can add the extensions to the top and the terminations. Additionally, for handrails, you can add supports. So these are these items, elements here, and you can pick the family, and you can change the layout to fixed distance, align with posts, a fixed number, maximum and minimum spacing, similar to when defining grids in curtain walls. I can choose change the spacing, so I could change the spacing to 1000, and justify the pattern to the center of the railing. Click apply, and you can see how they have moved closer together. That completes the settings for railings. Note that most of the properties, if not all of the properties, are defined at the type level of railings. Depending on the complexity and the differences between the railings in your project might mean that you end up with a considerable number of railing types, depending on the rail structure and especially the baluster placement in terms of how you justify the pattern and the families and the spacing used. So they often can get quite complex and you can have numerous railing types in your projects. Now that we've looked at creating simple railings by sketches and applying them to a host, let's look at what happens when the railings are applied to stairs. Here I have an L-shaped stair aligned to two walls with a curved wall in the corner. To place railings on stairs automatically, go to the railing tool, select the drop down, select place on stair or ramp. I can pick the type, I'm going to select the 900 millimeter pipe. I can then either apply the railing on the treads or the stringers. I currently have no stringers in my stair, so I'm going to select treads and I can hover over and it automatically highlights the stair. Click the stair and it's created the stair, the railings here. Note that it automatically gives an offset from path of 25.4 millimeters. Once these have been placed, I can select the railing and I'm going to change this one to the 900 millimeter pipe handrail. Notice how unfortunately the railing is now inside the wall. If I change the offset from path to zero millimeters and select the railing, if I go into a plan view, I have a flip arrow which allows me to flip the railing direction. So I can flip it and if I go back to the 3D, it's now flipped onto this side. And you can see how the supports here are now aligned to the wall. Like so. If I select the handrail on the wall and select edit type, I can change the tangent joints to add vertical or horizontal segments. Click apply and you can see how it's added this 
vertical segment here. I'm going to change that back to extend rails to meet and click OK. Just to demonstrate how that setting affects the railing. As this railing here in edit type has a top rail, if I cancel, I can actually hover over and press tab to actually select the top rail itself independently from the railing. So if I needed to make changes to the top rail type, I wouldn't necessarily have to go into the select the railing, go into edit type, into the top rail type. I could simply hover over the railing, select tab until you can see in the bottom left that I'm selecting the top rail type, select the top rail and click edit type, like so. Just to demonstrate up here, if I select edit type while still having the top rail type selected, I can change the transition from simple to gooseneck and I can also change it to none and I get a warning saying that the rail is not continuous and that breaks in the rail occur at sharply angled transitions like so. So I'm going to keep it as simple. In being able to select the top rail type independently, you can do the same with handrails. And if I hover over this railing and select tab to select the handrail, I can actually unpin this handrail by either navigating to this toggle pin button here, or I can select the unpin tool in the modify tab. And now, I can actually change the handrail type in this specific railing and effectively override the handrail defined by the railing type. So I could change this now to a pipe wall mounted, floor extension at the bottom and a wall extension at the top. So here you can see how the wall extension works. I can select edit type and here I have an extension that goes in, returns into the wall with a length of 300. If I reduce the hand clearance to say 55 millimeters, apply, see how the handrail moves back towards the wall. Once I've got this handrail selected, I can actually edit the individual rail itself. Once I've edited the rail, I can actually change the, and override the profile that is defined in the type properties of the handrail. I could pick from another separate set of profiles, or I could draw it independently by sketch. I can also edit the path of the handrail. So what I can actually do is on the, you see how on these lines, have turned blue. What I can actually do is I could edit the rail joins, select here, hover over to a, rail, a join, select here, and I can choose to, by type, I can either change it to mitre or I can change it to fillet, and I can then give a radius of say 100 millimeters. I will actually edit the railing to have a radius of 100 millimeters at this join here. I can then go up to the top and I can do the same here, fillet it by say 50 millimeters. Once I'm happy with the sketch adjustments of my handrail, I can finish edit mode and then finish edit mode of the handrail itself. So here I've made bespoke changes to the this instance of this handrail. 
I can do the same to top rails as well. If I zoom in and tab to select the top rail here, I can select edit rail. I can edit the path. I could actually choose down here to have this at a diagonal. But then it starts getting quite complicated, especially with tight angles. But I could do the same with edit the rail join and have a fillet of 100 millimeters, like so. Let's say I wanted to reset the handrail to the properties defined by the type of the handrail. I can just tab select to select the handrail, click reset rail, and you can see it's removed the changes to the path that I made previously. If I wanted to reset the handrail to the type defined by the railing type, I can select the railing, select reset railing, and it will then reset it to the handrail type defined in the type properties of the railing. So if I hover over and tab, in this case it is the pipe wall mounted. So that is a way of overriding the specific handrail or top rail of individual railings. If I select the railing and select edit type, you can see here I have a landing height adjustment ticked and the landing height adjustment is 100 millimeters, which means that this handrail is 100 millimeters above the height defined by the handrail. So if I change this, if I untick use handing height adjust, use landing height adjustment, click apply, you can see how this handrail has moved down. And if I change it to 100, it goes up by 100. If I change the landing height adjustment to 50 and click apply, it reduces it, reduces it down to 50 millimeters. Change that back to 100 and click OK. I can also change the position of these supports on an individual basis. I can hover over the support, press tab to individually select the support. I can unpin it and I can then click and drag to move it along the length of the handrail. If I pin it, it resets it to the position defined by the handrail type, which if I hover over tab to select the handrail type, select edit type, it is the fixed distance at a thousand millimeters. I can also select the support and I can create a copy and this will create a new instance and I can move this to wherever I need along the length of the handrail. So if I were to change this handrail type, unpin it, change it back to the extension handrail, I could zoom into the support down here, unpin it, and drag it so that it is positioned along the top of the handrail, like so. Just a note, when editing the path of the rail, because this handrail is defined, is the only rail effectively in this railing. I could define the, the curve, say here, with the edit path tool. However, in the case of, say, this balcony railing, I may wish for the top rail 
to have a fillet on the corners, in which case I can tab select to select the top rail, edit the rail, edit the path, edit the rail join, select this corner here, select fillet, and change the radius to say 200 millimeters. Note that now this corner baluster is now disconnected from the top rail here. Finish that sketch, edit mode, and then finish this edit mode. So you can see how this allows me to have a different path for the top rail as it does for the railing itself. I could then do the same thing with the handrail, edit the rail, edit the path, edit the join here to have another fillet of 200 millimeters. So that when people are walking around, they can grab onto this handrail, but the railing stays at 90 degrees. If I wanted to reset this top rail, select the top rail, and reset, like so. So that completes the lecture on railings and how to set up all the various type properties, including how to edit top rails and handrails to suit unique and bespoke situations. As they are quite complex elements to model, Making changes to railings that already exist in the model can be quite difficult and often very frustrating. Therefore, I would recommend that if you need to make changes to the railing, that you actually delete the railing that you currently have and you start again from scratch. This way it gives you more control from the start so you know where you are drawing your sketch lines to, how you are aligning and changing the properties. This is just a recommendation based on experience. In the next lecture, we'll go and create some basic railings for the stairs in the Villa Stein model.